Okay, so let's wrap up our look at networks here from my standpoint. So here's what we've learned so far. Okay, let's just work with some of the acronyms. You guys already identified this, that there's the local area network and the wide area network. And there could be an acronym you could slip in the middle, the, the met metropolitan area network, absolutely. But really, if we just focus on this, that there are two different sizes of networking, from small networks to larger networks, to network, what do we need? Well, we need some hardware. Okay? The hardware would include the wires to actually wire them up, or the wireless, okay? Or a combination of wired and wireless. But then the devices that we connect to the network would need a network card. Okay, and remember the word card essentially just means a circuit board or circuitry. Sometimes the network card is already built right into the device. So small devices like phones, they don't have like special like motherboards and daughter boards and stuff like that. They just kind of all put it all together in that small amount of space. Okay, but in larger components like computers or printers, they'll actually have a circuit board that'll plug into the inside of it. And if you are sort of a hobbyist and like to work on hardware, you can actually pull that thing out and put a different one in and stuff like that. So that's on the hardware side. On the software side, okay, for networking to work, we need what's called the network operating system. So you've heard the word operating system before, but now you need software to connect to the network. What that specifically deals with is something called protocols. I'm sure you've heard that word before. The simple way to describe protocols are rules. Okay? If you're going to connect things in a network, they all have to be speaking the same language. Okay? So we talked a little bit about that last time. The rules or the protocols for working with a network, the protocol rules, are you're going to send data from one place to another. You can't always send it as one big piece of data. So data is broken into packets. Okay? And this is for several reasons. One, it, it allows you to, so say you were sending a giant file across the internet. If you sent it as one big thing and then all of a sudden there was a problem, you'd have to resend the whole thing. So by splitting it up into lots of little packets, Okay, all going to the same place. If one of them has a problem when we get to the destination, I just ask for that packet back. I don't have to ask for the whole thing back. So from an efficiency standpoint, it works better. As well, when we think about the internet, there's so much data flying around all the time, all of it broken into little packets, that it's just the machines are working with tons and tons of little data all the time. Okay. But in order for this to work, for one system to be connected to another system, they have to agree on some rules, like how big should the packets be? Um, how can I tell if a packet has arrived or not arrived? Those are the rules we're talking about, okay? So from the hardware side, we have that. From the software side, we have that. We have the two different types of networks. Then we talked about something called topology. Okay, topology is the shape of the network. Do you, any of you guys remember some of the topologies? Ring, star, no, servers within the topology, bus, the bus topology. And then the fourth one was the hybrid, which is just a mix of the other ones, okay? That's what we looked at last time was these ideas of topologies. Okay, so today I want to look at the impact of networks. Now this is kind of just a simple sort of sociological sort of area, but it definitely is part of your exam material, okay? Some of this you could generally will just be able to write on exams with little effort on your part there, but let's just sort of look at some of these sort of things, okay? Networking once it has sort of been become part of our culture in computing, is now a big um, part of it because it, it adds a lot of sort of cost savings to companies 
and places like schools. And the fact that the internet itself exists has been a very revolutionary part of computing. But when you implement a LAN network, now you have the benefit of less expense of like not buying multiple printers, sharing files, we talked about that. But in order to maintain a LAN network, you need to have somebody who knows what they're doing because problems will occur. So one of the things you're gonna deal with a LAN network is you need to hire staff to maintain that. So for example, this school has a network technician. You guys have met her. She's been in the room several times. She is a skilled person. She's not a teacher. She's designed to maintain the network. When networking first started happening in computers in the uh, mid 90s, they actually were trying to use teachers to form that role. And at first, teachers could maybe, like a teacher like me could have maybe, I wasn't a teacher at the time, but maybe could have done that because the networking was small and it was easy to manage. But as the demand for networking got bigger, the teachers went, you know what, this is not my job. This is too big. And that's what's also happening in other companies so that they end up hiring somebody for that particular job. Okay. We just talked about this, this idea of rules or protocols within a network. So your network operating system enforces the protocols. It says, these are the rules. Okay. So when it sends a message, it breaks the message or the data up into packets. When those packets travel their destination, they actually might go all different ways to get from one place to another. There's no saying that it's always going to pump the packets all the same way. It's possible that they will go the same way, but it won't. Now that has an advantage too, because as these things got sent out across the internet, it's possible that say there's an earthquake in Taiwan and their networking center goes down and you were using Taiwan as a place to go through to get your message from North America to Japan. And when Taiwan went down, if you were always routing your packets through the same place, you would be unable to get your message through. But because they go different directions, it has that advantage as well. Sound effects for you guys today. When you get all the packets back, you can reassemble them back into your email or whatever it is you sent, okay? So that idea of information being broken up into packets is a big component of networking. The way the packets are organized is what the protocols determine. The protocols are determined by the network operating system, okay? The protocols, again, are the specific rules, like how do I get from one place to another? How big should they be? How do I, when I get to the hardware, determine which packet goes where? That's the rules, okay? We'll wrap up by looking at some of the impact of wireless networking, okay? So same idea, you still need the network operating system to determine the protocols, but now the hardware has got a wireless component to it, okay? So this is becoming more and more standard in networking, okay? I know, for example, most laptops, if not all laptops you buy off the shelf now, will have a wireless component built in. Most, if not all, tablets, I would say all, I'd be, I'd, I'd be willing to say all tablets have a wireless component built into them. All phones, smartphones, will have that wireless component built into them. Do any of you have an old desktop computer at home? Like an old, with a monitor, like these ones? Do any of you, like me, who had to, had to buy like a little wireless thing to stick in it? Like, it looks like a USB. I know I had to do that at my mom's computer. She had an old desktop. She wanted wireless, didn't have wireless built in. So you can buy, it just almost looks like a USB, and you plug it in, and now you have wireless, right? So that physical hardware had to be added in there. Um, so the wireless has the physical. Now, how does it work? Well, it can use radio transmissions. It can use infrared signal transmissions. There are lots of ways it can send the wireless information through the air. Like right now, this is actually sometimes a scary thought. How much actual electricity of for, the types of energy is passing through you right now? Like somebody's email is shooting through your body right now through a wireless. And it might be scary to think that way, right? So the whole Wi-Fi acronym was adopted to sort of standardize this. Now there's going to be a couple more acronyms I'm going to throw at you. The first version of Wi-Fi was called 802.11, okay? From there, it developed to 802.15. Now, you do not need to know these numbers, okay? You may have also heard of the addition of the Bluetooth 
a thing. So as companies start developing wireless technology, because it's so hot, they try to st start to get names into that. Next name that came up was one called WiMAX, okay? Worldwide Interoperability for wire wi Microwave Access, okay? Then maybe you've heard of 3G, and we're going to start in a second talk about 4G, okay? Which basically, by the way, the G just stands for generation. So 3G just means third generation. Then there was one called YGIG and Wireless HD. None of these have been the standard moving forward. They're all trying. These are big companies competing. This is a hot market, obviously. Okay? Even the transmitter that we got in the room here, I didn't even take a quick look at it if it has a branding on it. It has the company name on it, but sometimes you'll see that branding on there as well that's being adopted as a set of standards, right? So what is the standards, what are the protocols for good wireless combined with the hardware, okay? Um, Mac technology, and when I say Mac here, I'm not talking about Apple, I'm talking about something called uh, media access control, is what wireless networks use to access security systems like passwords and user IDs and they use specific IP or internet protocol numbers, numbers like this, hexadecimal values, and then there's other standard sort of protocol numbers to identify the different things, pardon me, the different nodes on the network, okay? Um, again, you don't need to know all the specific details of this. I just want to present some of this to you because now I want to run all the way back to the original curriculum from the IB and let's see if you guys have any last questions about networking. Sorry, I should have just stopped the thing, but just taking a quick back look at everything we looked at, the pictures of the wiring, blah, blah, blah. So let's go back to the actual curriculum. It was right at the beginning of this two classes ago. Okay. Here we go. So the curriculum said, identify different types of networks. Okay, here's what the side note says. Examples include local area network, virtual local area network, wide area network, storage area network, wireless local area network, internet, extranet. Okay, the word extranet, just so you know. Um, I'm not entirely sure what they mean by that. I think they mean intranet. Intranet means uh, it's like a little internet built within a specific area. So like, for example, if we had our own little internet here at Sturgeon Heights that didn't go out to the wider internet, you can do that. And so then you could build web pages and they could just be displayed within the school. It's not very popular, but that exists. The virtual private network, the personal area network, and the peer-to-peer -peer network, okay? So these are, this is what it's saying is these are examples. It doesn't say you have to know this. What it says you have to know is that there are different types of networks. Okay, what else do you need to know? The importance of standards in the construction of network. Okay, so it says standards in, enable compatibility through a common language internationally. So what are they talking about there? Give me a word buzzword to talk about standards. Yeah, and what is that related to? What's the word I said that's enforcing rules? Protocol, right, so you guys got the, the terms down. Okay, describe how communication over networks is broken down into different layers, and this involves something called the OSI seven layer model. I intentionally didn't cover that, and I'll get to why in a minute. Identify the technologies required to provide a VPN, a virtual private network. So again, we talked about what tech you need. You need the hardware, you need the software, okay? Evaluate the use of a virtual private network. Um, I don't really see a get benefit to that, okay? Um, identify the terms protocol and data packet. Okay, we did that. Why are protocols necessary? Explain why the speed of transmission across a network can vary. And there's nothing I can really teach you about that. You basically, better hardware, problems in the network, there's all kinds of reasons. Why is the compression of necess data necessary, okay? To speed it up, right? Uh, where are we? Um, how is that data transmitted using packet switching? So that was that idea again that it turns the data into lots of packets, the packets head out across the network, then they're reassembled. This is not that revolutionary type stuff. Outline the advantages and disadvantages of wireless network. 
Describe the hardware and software needed for a wireless network. Describe the characteristics of wireless network. Describe the different methods of network security and evaluate the advantages and disadvantages of each method of network security. So I think for the most part, we've covered the surface of this networking stuff. All right, now I have a little assignment for you guys. Just a quick one. 